Thanks for joining us today at the Restorative Divorce Podcast through Burt Law. Today we wanted to talk about loneliness post-divorce and how you can restore your happiness. Yeah. I think it's something that people don't talk about a lot in the divorce industry is what happens after divorce. Yeah, right. We see clients during the process, but you know, uh, not a lot of uh, law firms and and people in the field, you know, discuss talk about what happens afterwards because you know we have other clients that we handle but it's a you know for each for our clients it's a very big deal yeah I think you know definitely mental health professionals they focus on before during and after but not too many lawyers not too many divorce attorneys focus on the before during and after and so today we wanted to talk about that um, unique feeling of loneliness or perhaps grief that you might experience after divorce Hmm. when I followed up with my clients and I try to follow up with all of them after divorce if they want to uh, we have usually a a follow-up meeting by phone or by zoom and I can answer any questions of what to do afterwards. Once you have your judgment for dissolution of marriage uh, entered and signed by a judge, what do you do next? And a lot of times they will focus on going to the bank to separate bank accounts, trying to change their last name. And they have um, tasks that they want to accomplish. A lot of times they don't realize, they can talk to me also about perhaps emotionally what they're going through. I try to keep a list of people that help post-divorce, whether that's a counselor, whether that's a coach, a life coach, whether that is any professional that could help you transition from the legal process of divorce to what life looks like after divorce and so in that wrap-up meeting with my clients i want to know more about how you're doing instead of always focusing on those tasks the tasks are important we can guide you through that but the the number one issue is how are you doing and how are you feeling and a lot of people feel loneliness Hmm. after their divorce why do you think that is um well i you know it's it's a life changing event. Um, and I think people as they're, you know, contemplating divorce, going through the divorce, there's obviously breakdowns in relationships for whatever reasons along the way. Um, but you know, the, the final divorce decree, you know, when, when it's all over, you know, that is a a finality that I don't think people can, really come to terms with until it actually happens. They, they think about it, you know, but um, once their life changes, you know, that they, they can bring them on all different kinds of emotions, you know, and um, I mean, you're losing a partner, you're losing a friend, um, you're losing family members, you know, depending on the relationships you've, you've built with your significant others uh, family, you know, and, and so these are all, um, you know, depending on how long the marriage is, you know, these are relationships that have last a lifetime, you know, in some, some uh, instances. So it's a, it's a big change. It definitely is. And there's a lot of feelings perhaps of insecurity. There's feelings of loneliness. And I think sometimes there are underlying feelings of grief or depression Mm -hmm. we've always said it before divorce is one of the top stressful things that you've ever gone through and while you might initiate the divorce and think you're going to be extremely happy as soon as that process is done to your point earlier there's a finality to it people feel a lot different when they either receive court orders court judgments or sign a marital settlement agreement And that is a it's a it's a significant and big shift in life. And and you see it a lot at prove ups, right? And prove ups are the the last bit of, of 
you know, dealings with the court in these situations, whether they're settlement or, you know, litigated. There's Right. There's always that last court hearing because the judge needs to review your case. They need to review if you have a settlement agreement to make sure that it's binding and enforceable, not against public policy, that it's fair and equitable to both parties, and if you have children, that it's in the best interest of the children. So even in the most amicable of divorces, there's that final hearing date. And you're right. It is a time of unexpected emotions. People are nervous. People might realize they've held it together this long because they needed to be strong for their children, be strong for others, be strong at work. And that final hearing or just the finality of the divorce process can hit you in many different ways. And so today we were going to talk a little bit about the, that loneliness and and maybe what you can do to help restore happiness in your life post-divorce. Yeah. And, you know, grief after a divorce is unique. You can experience clearly grief when when somebody has passed away or died and your support system might circle around you and remind you of happy memories of that person. You might feel some grief or loss if you lose a job, but your support system might say there are opportunities out there for your skills or that you would be good at and they can be uplifting. Mm -hmm. But grief after divorce is unique. You haven't physically lost somebody to death. You might be on the verge of changing jobs because in the first, you know, for the first time in a long time, you're supporting yourself and your household. But usually your support system's not coming around and reminding you of good times during your marriage. Sure. So grief after divorce or loneliness after divorce is is very unique in that you need to be forward thinking and future focused during a time that you might not want to be thinking that way. Yeah. I think your support system in divorce and we can look at it as in breakups in general, right? They they tend to support you or the person, you know, by reminding them of how bad the other person was at the end, you know, and why you why it was good to to go through the process you know they don't they don't typically talk about how good that person was or what good memories like you said you know because that doesn't really lead to the the support that they think you know whether it, it whether it's needed or not so right and sometimes you might experience disappointment with your Uh, support group of friends or family because they might be minimizing the challenges you faced thinking that they are helping you by minimizing what you went through but you really went through a very difficult time and here are some tips that could help you focus on rebuilding yourself restoring happiness um, and not perhaps relying on somebody else in your informal support system to do that. So some options that are out there uh, can be companionship. You might not be thinking about that at the end of your divorce, but companionship can really see you through the grief process and it can see you through that difficult transition. And companionship can be friends. Mm -hmm. It can be people in your town that you volunteer with. It could also be adopting a pet, yeah. right? Pets yeah. take up a lot of your time and um, they will show you happiness that you didn't know. So sometimes companionship can be adopting a pet after your divorce, starting something new, a new yeah. relationship. But if you have children, starting something new can be really difficult because you're still focused on your kids and how are they doing. And sometimes that idea of companionship or being able to go out in your community and do different things aren't there if you're a parent. Sure. You might not have that time available to you to go do those things. And so what do you think could be some some things that parents can do to try to restore happiness for themselves and their children? Well, I think, you know, one thing that parents can do is 
start new traditions, you know, in the new schedules. Um, you know, it, the family unit is, has now changed, um, and there's going to be back and forth, you know, typically with, you know, the, the other parent. And, you know, so it can be hard to um, stick to traditions that have been there for a long time. So now is a good opportunity to create new ones. And those can be any, any sorts of ways, but something that, you know, you could do with your kids to, to make them happy and, you know, give them memories of, um, you know, going forward and, you know, give yourself a new, a uh, new outlook and something for you to look forward to, you know, I, while involving your kids and, um, you know, not looking in the past. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, maybe some tangibles from that are new traditions for holidays. You could take a look at your parenting plan and you might not be allocated that particular holiday, but maybe you get a bonus holiday yeah. where you celebrate before or after and your children could be excited about having two celebrations or two things to look forward to. Um, also, like with their birthdays, you might not be allocated a child's birthday, but you could celebrate again before or after and the child will then have memories with both families, you know, celebrating. And another new tradition I think is important for new, newly single parents, and it's something you probably haven't done through the divorce, or maybe you didn't do when your marriage wasn't going well, but a new tradition is, is focusing on your own time. Time when you don't have the kids, what can you do to enrich your own life during that time? Because that can be a very lonely time when sure. the kids leave and you don't have these bonus holidays to focus on and celebrate. You've got a couple months there where there are no special occasions. Focusing on me time and getting back to doing something that you can do within your budget, within your time constraints, and, and maybe when the children aren't around, that can be a new tradition for you. Mm -hmm. Whether that's joining a class, joining a gym, painting, doing things that you can do to look forward to and so that you aren't so focused on the loneliness that you might experience at the start when you're starting a parenting schedule. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when when you have the life change, um, it is hard to not focus, specifically if you have kids, you know, it is hard not to focus on the kids and miss the kids and always want to be with the kids because that's how it's always been. Right. Um, you know, I think people can take comfort in the fact that in those times and even, you know, when times were good, there was always times when you need me time, you know, mom and dad need time, right? It's, it's one of those things. So now in your new life, you know, whether you want it or not, that time is afforded to you. You know, and, and it's a great opportunity to, one, you know, know the kids are safe. You know, the kids are, you know, probably with the other parent and, you know, they're doing what they're supposed to do. And now it's, you know, you can really focus on you by by doing some of those things. And there's a whole different, you know, uh, you can have a whole different outlook just by focusing on yourself and, and learning, you know, different, learning new things, um, trying new things, not having to worry about the kids you know I don't need to be home I don't need to pick anybody up you know it's really me time you time right and you know it's not to say that this is easy to do it's very easy for us to say here are some tips to get through this process it could take people time hmm. it's not something that you can just immediately implement but if you're listening today maybe jot down some notes. Maybe it takes a couple months before you are in a position to think about new activities, new traditions, new companionship, um, a new schedule for the kids, and that's okay. If it takes longer than three to six months to adapt, perhaps at that point it is time to talk to somebody in a professional capacity that can help you adjust to the loneliness that you can experience post-divorce. Because sometimes doing 
finding new companionship, doing new activities. It's easy to say to do that stuff, but sometimes it might not restore your happiness. And and if that's the case, it's okay to have a trusted professional to talk to, to perhaps give you specific ideas of what you might be able to do or to give you uh, perhaps the treatment you might need um, Mm post-divorce. And those resources are support groups, you can find online divorce support groups or post-divorce support groups or single mom support groups, single dad support groups. It's a good starting point. Professionals, there are there's one-on-one therapy that can also help. And there's support groups on, on social media such as Facebook or um, within your local churches, there will be support groups. And all of those things can be used, I think, in addition to those self-motivated tips that we provided. Yeah. <clears throat> if you have a feeling that your loneliness is not going away after implementing some of those self-motivated tips, and it's not going away with a support group that you might have joined, perhaps then a professional, talk to your doctor, talk to a therapist, and they can really help you and give you the tools that you need to be the best person you can be, to be the best parent that you can be. A lot of clients that I work with will work with a counselor through the divorce process, and they might not realize that it's, it's good to continue or to have that relationship after the divorce process as well, because that's really the first time that you're standing on your own, that you are not having the high stress obligations or distractions that a divorce can provide. And what do you do after that? I think a professional yeah. that can help you restore your happiness, restore a sense of self-sufficiency really will set you up for set you up for success post-divorce something that either you were hopeful for or something that you're you know now striving to accomplish yeah yeah so if you want any more information about restorative divorce restorative practices so that you can um, restore happiness post-divorce please feel free to look at the resources on our website at bertlaw.com. We cover a lot of these topics on our blog, and we also have a lot of trusted divorce professionals that we can refer you to. So if you are not comfortable reaching out to family or friends, uh, please you know, give us a call. We can provide you with a list of, of people that in your area that can help you. Yep. Thanks for joining us this week. Uh, We will have more topics about restorative divorce next time.